Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 35. In this video, we're going to learn about ratios and rates. Okay, so for the lesson objectives for today, we want to learn how to write a ratio that describes a given situation. And we also want to learn how to write a unit rate that describes a given situation. So we're going to kind of just start out with a basic definition here. We're going to say that a ratio is a comparison of two quantities with the same units. And later on, we're going to talk about rates and a rate is basically a special ratio where the units are going to be different. To kind of start off here, we're going to use ratios a lot moving forward. And they're actually something that will help you in your everyday life. As an example, let's say that you're at a school dance. And at the school dance, you talk to the chaperone and they tell you that there are four boys for every two girls at this dance. So four boys for every two girls at the dance. Well, we can describe this relationship by writing a nice little ratio. And there's three main ways we do this. So if we want the relationship between boys and girls, we can write boys to girls like this as a fraction. And so boys is in the numerator. So I'd put the number of boys in my numerator when I write the ratio. Girls is in the denominator. So I'd write the number of girls in the denominator when I write the ratio. And we'd say it differently, right? Instead of saying four over two, we would say four to two. Now, if we flip this and said girls to boys, this would be two to four, right? It's relative, right? The number of girls I have is two to the number of boys that I'm told that I have is four. Now, there's more ways to write it, but I want to show you something before I get into that. When you have a ratio, you always want to simplify it just like we did when we work with fractions. So we know that four over two or four to two as a ratio is the same as two to one. If I divide four by two, I get two. If I divide two by two, I get one. Now one main difference is if I'm working with fractions and I have two over one, I just write that as two. When I'm working with a ratio, I have this relationship between boys and girls. So I leave the one there because I'm saying I have two boys, two boys for every one girl, one girl. And then over here, I could just rewrite this as one to two. Some other ways that we could write this ratio. I could write boys to girls like this using a colon, okay? So this would be two to one, right? Because I have two boys for every one girl. And then I could also write it using the word two. I could say boys to girls like this. And I could say two to the word two, not the number two, one like that. So all of these are ways that we can write a ratio. Most commonly, I would say you're going to see it this way or this way, right? As a fraction or with a colon. This is sort of uncommon. Right, it's sort of uncommon, but still you may see it from time to time. So you need to know that we're talking about a ratio when we see something like this. So let's kind of continue with this example and I'll show you a common test question for ratios. So remember we had four boys for every two girls. And we said that this simplified to a ratio where it's boys to girls of two to one. Now your typical question would say something like, if there were 42 kids at the dance, how many were boys, how many were girls? So let's think about that. So out of 42 kids, we're gonna put boys, question mark, and then girls, question mark. How would we figure something like this out? Well. The first thing I would do is I would take my two numbers in my simplified ratio and I would add them together. So I have two boys to one girl. So two plus one is three. So that tells me in one group, in one group, I will have three kids and I will basically have two boys and I'll have one girl. If I have 42 total kids, essentially I'm saying, how many equal groups of three can I make out of 42? Well, 42 divided by three is 14. 
So I'm essentially saying I have 14 of these groups, so I would multiply the numbers here by 14. So 2 times 14 would give me 28. So this tells me that for 42 kids, I would have 28 boys, and I would multiply 1 times 14 and get 14, so I'd have 14 girls. And if this isn't clear for you, let me just kind of make a little chart. So we would have kids, and then we would have boys, and then we would have girls. So if three kids attend, we know that two are boys, one's a girl. And we're gonna increase in increments of three here. So if we go from three to six, then we're gonna have what? We've doubled here, so we have to double everything here. Now we're gonna have four boys and two girls, right? All I did was multiply everything here by two. Two times two is four, one times two is two, three times two is six, right? Everything has just been doubled. Well, if I now go to 12 kids, essentially I'm taking the original amount and just multiplying it by four, right? So I have four times the amount of kids there. So instead of two boys multiplied by four, I'd have eight. Instead of one girl multiplied by four, I'd have four. So we can take this all the way up to, let's say 42. And basically it's 14 times the original amount. So I just multiply everything here by 14. Two times 14 would be 28. So I'd have 28 boys. One times 14 would be 14. So I'd have 14 girls. All right, so let's take a look at a different problem. So we have a mixture that contains 24 milliliters of alcohol for every eight milliliters of water. And we wanna state the ratio of alcohol to water. So I'm just gonna do this using a fraction, but again, if you wanna use a colon, you can do that as well. So again, the ratio of alcohol to water, so alcohol to water. Notice that alcohol, the first word, or the word that occurs before the word to is in the numerator. Water, the second word, occurs in the denominator. So I have 24 milliliters, 24 milliliters to eight milliliters. And again, with a ratio, you're gonna have the same units. So you don't really have to write them because you can kind of think of them as just canceling each other out. So we could just write 24 over eight. And if we simplify this, we know that 24 divided by eight is three. So really I'd write it as three to one. And again, very important, leave the one there. I know generally when we work with fractions, we just write that as three. But with a ratio, we're talking about the relationship where we're saying we have three milliliters of alcohol to every one milliliter of water in this mixture. Now it says to state the ratio of water to alcohol. So again, if your words are flipped, you just flip your ratio. So water to alcohol. Remember when we looked at alcohol to water, the simplified version was three to one. So when we look at water to alcohol, it's gonna be one to three, meaning I have one milliliter of water for every three milliliters of alcohol in this mixture. Let's take a look at some follow-up questions. So let's suppose that we have a 120 milliliter mixture. So I'm gonna write here that we have a 120 milliliter mixture. We wanna know how many milliliters of alcohol are in the mixture and how many milliliters of water are in the mixture. So let me kind of scroll down to the next page and get a little room going. Again, I'm gonna write that it's a 120 milliliter mixture. And let's just write the ratio of alcohol to water. Alcohol to water. And remember, that's three to one. Three milliliters to one milliliter. And again, I left off the milliliter because, you know, we could write that in there if you want. But again, these would basically cancel out. And you just write it as three to one. That's just very common. That's what we do. All right. So if we want to find out how much alcohol is in this mixture and how much water is in this mixture, we have to think about what would be in one group. So one group would be three plus one or four, four milliliters, that's one group, and you basically have three milliliters of alcohol, and you're going to have one milliliter of water. So how many of these groups can I make out of 120 milliliters? Well, you take 120, and you divide it by four, and you would get 30. So I can make 30 of these groups. So I would just multiply 30 by three to get the amount of alcohol I'm gonna have. 30 times three is 90. So I'm gonna have 90 milliliters of alcohol. 
Then I would multiply 1 times 30 to find out how many milliliters of water I'd have. 1 times 30 is 30. So I would have 30 milliliters of water. In a mixture with 120 milliliters, with an alcohol to water ratio of 3 to 1, you're going to have 90 milliliters of alcohol and 30 milliliters of water. So similar to ratios, a rate is a special type of ratio that compares two quantities with different units. So when we start talking about rates, we're generally going to be talking about something known as the unit rate. And that's going to be the amount of something per one unit. So generally speaking, we just divide the numerator by the denominator to get a unit rate or the rate per single unit. So as an example, we have Jeff earned $63 in nine hours. What is the unit rate in dollars per hour? So you just kind of set this up just like you would with a ratio. So we're going to put $63 in the numerator and we're going to put nine hours in the denominator. And essentially to find the unit rate or the amount of dollars that he earns per one hour, you're going to take the number in the numerator, which is 63, and divide it by the number in the denominator, which is nine. We know that 63 divided by nine is seven. So when we basically just simplify this, we end up with $7 per one hour, or he earns $7 per hour. We have that Jennifer drove 125 miles in five hours. What is the unit rate in miles per hour? So this is a common one you might use on a trip somewhere. So we have 125 miles. We'll put that in the numerator and we'll have five hours. We're going to put that in the denominator. We're trying to find out how many miles per one hour. So again, we take the number in the numerator. We divide that by the number in the denominator. So 125 divided by five is 25. So this numerator is going to be 25 and then miles. And in the denominator, this is going to be a one and then it's going to be hour. So she was going 25 miles per one hour. So one common thing we use unit rates for is to compare prices. And a lot of times when you go to the grocery store, you'll see next to the price, it's this much per unit, maybe this much per ounce or this much per gallon, so on and so forth. So in our example here, we have that five gallons of milk sells for $15, while 10 gallons of milk sells for $20. Which option has a lower cost per gallon? So what we would do is take the dollar amount in each case and divide it by the number of gallons of milk we're getting in each case, that'll give us the unit rate or the price per gallon of milk. So the first scenario is $15 for five gallons of milk. So if I take 15 and divide by five, I get three. So this is essentially $3 per one gallon, right? And I could put gallon of milk, but I'm just gonna kind of shorten that a little bit. The next scenario is 10 gallons for $20. So I'm gonna set this up as $20, and then in the denominator, I'll put 10 gallons of milk. And again, I'm gonna do 20 divided by 10. That's gonna give me two. So my new numerator will say $2, and then per, again, one gallon, one gallon. So obviously this is cheaper. So between these two scenarios, this one is going to be cheaper, right? Spending $20 on 10 gallons of milk gets you a price of $2 per gallon. And again, if you were to spend $15 on five gallons of milk, you'd be paying more per gallon or a price of $3 per gallon.